Tackling technologies is a very uh, easy theme title to use year after year because technologies have helped us always to do the things that we do and they always will. So each year we'll have enabling technologies to talk about. This is a remarkable person, a gentleman. This is a remarkable person. And I am grateful to him for being here. Welcome. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Do I get a slide advance, sir? Fantastic. Well, I'm not going to belabor the uh, importance of obesity both to individual health and society, which takes me straight on to slide three. We're going to move. But what I would like to talk to you today about is how, in the, how the work we've done in the laboratory, we've been trying to translate that to real people's lives. And so today I'm going to talk about bridges between science and solution, talk about the science first. Well, the obesity epidemic is not a mystery, actually, despite popular belief. It is the pers persistent and sustained positive energy balance, whereby energy expenditure, the calories we expend, has declined, whereas food intake has re remained inappropriately high. We're interested in that decline in energy expenditure. Here's why. When you actually look at the variability in human energy expenditure, I mean, people living in a sedentary country, you see massive scatter, there's huge variability. So that huge variability says to us, perhaps scientifically this could be important in the variability of why half the population are overweight or obese, whereas the other half somehow remain lean. When you look at that variability in energy expenditure, that variability is explained not by basal metabolic rate, which is fixed by lean body mass, or the thermic effect of food, which is small, but by the variability in activity. Since most people, more than three quarters of the population, don't exercise, it has to be variability in non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Neat. And if one ponders for a second the implications of modernization, what one calculates is that our NEAT has declined with modernization by 1,000 to 2,000 calories a day. Here are some data. If you look in Jamaica, we measured the NEAT in people working in agricultural communities in rural Jamaica, and then followed them into Kingston as they urbanized into factories. And what you can see, compared to a lean and then obese Americans, is progressively more and more and more sitting, and less and less and less activity, the so-called sitting disease. They can't keep up, can they? And so, if you actually compare the chair-bound job that most of us have with that akin to strenuous agricultural work, what one sees is a difference in NEAT of approximately 2,000 calories a day. We're at the losing end. Now, is with that huge variability in non-exercise activity thermogenesis and the difference between people with sedentary jobs and active jobs, is NEAT important in the physiology in how we actually gain weight? Well, the answer is yes. When you overfeed people, those people who can eat as much as they like and excess 56,000 calories in this experiment and not gain a pound are those people who increase their NEAT, their non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Those less fortunate individuals who, when they overeat, deposit every single extra calorie as body fat, those are the people predisposed to obesity. In order to start teasing this apart, we develop magic underwear. This enables, us to sense, this enables us to sense every single movement a person makes day and night. And I will tell you, working in the lab is great fun. <laughs> and what we discover, licentiousness apart, is that those individuals with obesity, compared to lean individuals with similar sedentary jobs, no one goes to the gym in our experiments. Those people with obesity are prone to be seated two and a half hours per day more than lean individuals living in the same environment. Low NEAT equals sitting equals obesity, if you like. High NEAT equals walking equals lean, if you like. Trying to then understand a step back, if you like, how that can be, how the energetic consequence can be so great, what we then do is bring people into the laboratory and measure the calories they burn. So pacing around, and this is the crucial piece of information, at this speed, which is 1.7 miles an hour, burns an extra 100 to 150 calories an hour. That pacing around, walk around and burn 100 to 150 calories an hour. So if everybody got up now, which of course you're invited to do, and were to pace around, we would burn that extra to 150 calories an hour. If you've got the urge, do it. 
When you then look, using the magic underwear, at every single walk that a free-living person undertakes, this is very important. The way regular people burn all these calories isn't by striding around for miles and miles and miles at the Mall of America, but is lots of short-duration, low-velocity walks. The median free-living walking velocity of a human being is 1.1 miles an hour when you average it, and the average duration of the average walk is about 12 minutes, kind of akin to going to the bathroom. And so, lots of little walk counts, lots of little walks count. Walking around, you burn the extra to 100 to 150 calories an hour. So, the bottom line to all of this is, over 150 to 200 years, we become chair sentenced, our energy expenditure is falling, and of course, obesity is an inevitable consequence. Well, what are we going to do about it? How can we transform that information to solutions? Well, scalability is what it's all about, of course, because there are 100, and, there are 100 million Americans suffering, one and a half billion people in the world with obesity. So, our first step was to develop the components necessary to do this. We work with a whole series of technologies, working with big partners to integrate the technology into their devices. That's an MP3 player earpiece sticking in somebody's ear with one of those motion detectors in it. On the right is a cell phone that integrates the accelerometry to measure movement, to measure the need, and so people can compete. And in the middle is a device we built here at the Mayo Clinic that enables us to measure NEAT 10 times a second for a year without a battery change. We took that device and commercialized it, and it's now called the Groove device. And so regular people can get one of these and measure how active or inactive they are, and if they're too inactive, they get a buzz. And I'm being, <laughs> they really do. We then take all this technology and validate it in the laboratory on the x-axis is acceleration, on the y-axis energy expenditure, and these technologies are beautiful. But it's not just movement. It's not just energy expenditure that's important. There are other variables critical in obesity. This is a stress cam. It stops, it's high-definition thermal imaging. It sits on top of your computer and measures how stressed out you are. The bottom panels are somebody stressed out, and most people most days look like that. How do you then transform physical environments? Well, we spend a lot of time working on redesigning offices. Here's a simple example where we lay carpet tape down, and this is a walking track, so you can hold your meetings walking and talking. And as you know, we developed these desks, which eventually became, through a strategic partnership, a commercial product, and now there are various products out there doing exactly this. But you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on desks. Here's a walk and talk, walking meeting in progress thing that you can walk around in, and so people know not to interrupt you. And here's a stepper that sits under your desk, and when you're on a conference call, instead of falling asleep, you can step yourself away to health. And all of these things we validate, on average, for an obese person, you burn about 150 extra calories an hour doing any of these various things. Well, we then took all these ideas and compiled them into a day-by-day -day neat plan, bringing in ethics, of course, behavior, food, cooking, and so on and so on and so forth. And so now we've got, we've, we're starting to develop comprehensive solutions. Well, taking all these pieces and delivering them is useless unless they're, unless they're commercial ready, unless they're literally ready for the sort of marketplace. And so, of course, the first step was to make the movie. We did that. Um, no comment. Then we, wrote, then, then we published the book, and, and, and that was um, worth doing. That brought in those plans and some of the science. If you actually cut your um, G3 or G4 iPhone into pieces, and it's something you can do at home, it's great fun, what you'll see inside is, a, is an accelerometer that measures all of these movements. They're very precise and accurate. And so, of course, we wrote the app. And this is very interesting. We released it in January with no advertising, no budget. In four months, we had about 8,000 users. And then Business Week picked it up as one of their top five apps. And two days later, there were 28,000 users. But what you see, very interestingly, when you break down the data, is that you, it's the same message. It's lots of little movements is what makes up your need. And then in case you think we ignore, we ignore food, here's fritter.me where you can take pictures of what you eat, and then your friends can comment on them. I'll tell you, that's heinous. Anyway. Then, then there's the device. It's one thing to have a device, it's another thing to have a platform. So then we spent quite a lot of time developing the platform so that individuals could access their groove and develop a healthy lifestyle with, and with behavioral intervention and coaching and so on and so forth. And then there's the suit. And thank you, of course, to Matt Damon for coming not to the Mayo Clinic to them. So, Bringing all of these things together, bringing all of these components, now in commercial styling, if you like, together, how do you then deploy them at work? Well, we develop individual work plans for one of 55 corporations we work in. Each time we go to a place, we develop an individual plan. We bring in platinum-grade technologies to actually assess how we're doing, so we measure how we're doing company by company. We, the, the key is actually the person on the left over there. 
Her name is Desiree in this case. And what she is somebody we've trained to deploy these programs in two minute snaps, day by day, client by client, because companies release their individuals for coaching for more than two minutes a day. And so integrating all of these pieces is critical. Oops, sorry. There you see this being deployed in the marketplace. In, the top, in, the, in that picture up there, you've actually got somebody doing a sales meeting, doing, uh, I can't remember what it's called, this thing. Rock, paper, something or other. And anyway, I mean, they, they got the deal, apparently. And, here, and so then we do all of this, we gather all the data, and then we publish it. There's no point doing this unless you can prove efficacy. In this case, the whole group loses weight, all our B subjects lose weight, and in fact, even the lean individuals lose weight. And so we view it as critically important to go company by company, modification by modification, and validate, 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 and then scale up. And the way we do it is, of course, it's not just science. We also have an economics team. We have an ROI. We have a commercial development team. And we also have technology teams to integrate what we're doing with the company. There's no point going in and, fill it and sort of getting in the way, because otherwise things don't go so well. Great to do it at work. Obviously, you know, the next generation, I don't need to talk about childhood obesity. But the opportunities are incredible to impact a new generation of kids. That's all I will say. So we've been very, every year new schools are built. So we've been, we developed a school of the future designed by children for children. It's an active environment akin to sort of a, a learning village. And kids are learning on walking stations using dynamic technologies. They, we integrate, you know, dance, dance revolution into the lessons and then validate. And again, here you see in the red line that the children going to the NEAT school are far more active and, of course, healthier and so on and so forth. And then finally, an area we actually fell into, um, we, were we were delivering all of these corporate programs where we were there every day delivering weight loss, adjusting people's insulin, and we were asked by companies, well, why aren't you delivering diabetes care? And the point is this, if, if, again, when you look at just diabetes alone, let alone the other complications of obesity, you see that diabetes alone carries a price tag of $218 billion. And so very quickly we realized we needed to build a modular health delivery program that enabled us to deliver piece by piece of this healthcare solution. Validate, 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 move on. And that's what we did. So now we started to deliver, delivering this multi-modular healthcare, and we call it POO, POEM place of existence medicine. So wherever people are, if they're at work, theoretically at school, we haven't delivered POEM at schools yet, we deliver their health care to where people are. Of course, it's very convenient, it's very quick, and people are getting their data very, very quickly. And the way we do this, we developed a van system, and here's one of our vans, and you've got all sorts of, this is a DEXA machine that measures body composition, bone mineral density, we have our blood testing in there, and of course, it's wheelchair accessible. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me here today. The objective of, of, of my talk was to try and explain how we've taken what we've done in the laboratory to bring it to the population. I'm firmly of the belief, and I'm absolutely positive, we can not only end obesity in the current adult population, I'm absolutely sure we can prevent it in children too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.